News dumb. Are you dumb? <laughs> That's right. You heard a different sounder right there because we are having an issue with our news dump sounder. So I'll be swapping in and out. Crash more quotes. What a what a week we're having. We couldn't we couldn't figure out a good schedule to record a regular episode. And then when we decided on this morning, the thing we were gonna do is obsolete. It's gone. It's deleted forever. It's somewhere with fucking Batgirl. It's just gone. Well, before we start singing vitamin C again for the 100th time on this podcast, let's not do it. Let's not do it. Only Films Media on social media apparently has said, uh, we're signing off one more time. And this time when they signed off on X, that's what it's called now, it looks like their entire 300 movie list of movies that were never made, uh, canceled movies, whatever you want to call it, that list is gone. Those lists are gone. So when Mac and I said, what are we going to do this week? Let's do Canceled Movies Volume 7. The list is gone. <laughs> That's it. Gone forever. What I think we got to like 120 I, uh, somewhere in there. We're we got more over than halfway 100. through the list. We have yeah. to finish Oh, we're more it. than we have, halfway? Oh, wow. We have like we, five more episodes to go. We, we were making some good progress there. So that'll be forever discontinued. Unless someone could somehow figure out how to find Twitter tweet archives, or maybe they got it on a site somewhere. I don't know, but uh, canceled movies forever uh, gone. I guess it's been canceled. Oh, but I did DM them earlier being like, please send these to me. We have like 120 left. We really, really need these. <laughs> Pretty please. News dump. Uh, I don't care if I die at all. Everything has sucked lately. Mac, the weekend box office is in and civil war. Had itself a time. This is absolutely stunning, Gu. Apparently, this is A24's biggest opening weekend for mm -hmm. a, a movie. And that is really breaking my brain because this movie does not seem to appeal to the masses. And yet somehow it's A24's. It's the title of the movie. Yeah. That's what drew people in. Right, right. And I also think. It might turn some people off to what happens during the movie, but it's interesting. So far, it's getting good scores, um, both user and uh, critics. Uh, I have seen some sort of scathing, isn't the word, but some real annoyed reviewers have a very similar sentiment that you had. Yeah, and I think that because it is so divisive, much like a civil war, if you mm -hmm. will, Mac, I don't think the box office numbers are going to take a huge dip. Wow, that's interesting. I, I have no, I actually have a less desire to see it knowing what I know now. So I don't think I'm going to pay to see it. Here's the bet. Will the movie make over $10 million in its second weekend? So if you go by what, what is it usually a 60% drop off to, to the second weekend on for big movies? So that I think would it's be 50. Or you want to avoid like the 60 and 70 drop off. So if it's a 50%, it's going to make 12 million. If it's 60, it's probably going to be right around that nine or 10. So yeah. that's probably, yeah, it's probably going to be right around that 10 or 12 million. Also at the box office, Kong times Godzilla equals money made 15 and a half million more dollars domestically. Ghostbusters and Kung Fu Panda coming in third and fourth. Ghostbusters really not hitting that, uh, the uh, box office that they want. Not yeah, that's close. not surprising considering no one's really liked that movie. I believe Kong and Godzilla is over 400 million now. I don't know if that's domestically or worldwide, but that I think that's worldwide has, has made it. But it's doing back. very well domestically as well. Yeah. News dump. Fuck you. You suck. <laughs> Ryan Gosling hosted SNL for the third time this weekend. Emily Blunt popped up during a pretty, uh, a pretty good monologue. I would say a little long, a well-crafted yeah. monologue. The cold open was the Beavis and Butthead sketch, right? No, the cold open was the throwback to that alien sketch with Kate McKinnon. Okay. I didn't see that one. I only saw three sketches, the ones that you put on here. I haven't had okay. time to watch the full episode. Yeah, I but still, I, I got about like 20 minutes left in the episode, so I haven't okay. finished it either. The Beavis and Butthead sketch, though? Hilarious. I think, uh, so good. I have to assume that Heidi never saw those two in the costumes yeah. so that when she turned around for the first time, that's when she saw them. Yeah. So if you don't know what we're talking about, Heidi go Gardner. watch this. Sketch. I don't know her personally. Um, Heidi Gardner and uh, Keenan are doing this like town hall sort of political type of uh, like a live faux CNN type of thing. 
and uh, in the audience behind her is Ryan Gosling dressed up as Beavis, and it's like a live action Beavis, which yeah. is visually very funny. And that's funny enough. They get him to move because it's distracting. And then Mikey Day comes in dressed as Butthead. And like Goose said, it was clear that they didn't show Heidi Gardner the looks. Like when they did dress rehearsal, they probably didn't have the hair and yeah. makeup, whatever. When she turns and sees Butthead, all time break. Like yeah. I, I was trying to think like Pantheon of SNL characters breaking and uh, short of. Uh, the Lindsay Lohan Disney World. Oh, that's a really good one. I was thinking of Debbie. D- Hot Debbie, tub. Um, well, the Lindsay oh, Lohan Disney World is Debbie Downer. Oh, okay. I thought I was thinking about um, Lindsay Lohan in the Harry Potter one. That one was real that's good. That's a good too. one too. Um, Debbie Downer stuff is always top notch. The the hot top one is really good. Short of those two or three, this might be in the running for best break ever. And then also we got a follow up to one of my favorite sketches of all time, which was Papyrus. That was the man who was obsessed with the font of Avatar being Papyrus. This sketch, first off, it was cut from the show. Yeah, and, and I, they should not have I, cut it. No, I understand why. It was because six minutes and 43 seconds. It was long, you could have left sure. this at the bottom of the ocean. The, this was long, but there were a couple of lines in there that absolutely fucking killed me. Uh, I really liked the spin on it, too. The, to me, it was good. Not as good as well, the original. It's a papyrus. funny spin, but yeah. find a way to get it to around three minutes. It should have been like four and a half minutes, four, four and a half. It was definitely too long. Um, but I like people were looking forward to this sort of yes. sequel. So I think yeah. he should have included it instead of releasing it on fucking Twitter. News down. You don't give a shit who's in your way, do you? What'd you say? You don't give a shit who's in your way, do you? Not really. Conan was the guest on the season finale of Hot Ones. Of course, Hot Ones is the internet show with Sean Evans interviewing celebrities as they eat increasingly hotter chicken wings. Conan went on there. First thing that he said is that as an Irish youth, I didn't have a lot of flavor or heat in my life, so I'm not used to this type of stuff. And by wing six or seven, he was dumping the hot sauce in his mouth. <laughs> I haven't watched this. I've just seen you haven't it watched it yet. No, I haven't seen. I it I am yet. telling you right now, and I don't want to get seen the clip away. of him pouring the milk in his mouth. Okay, so he did that at the end as a joke. First yeah. off, this entire thing was a joke, and what mm-hmm. he was doing was he would eat the full chicken wing and then he'd put it in his pocket, <laughs> and he would save it for later. And he he would just constantly drink the hot sauce and then out of nowhere go you people are getting soft it's just hot chicken wings what is wrong with everybody to the point of at the end of it his face is covered in chicken and sauce and milk and he's talking into the camera and after all he just did i said you know what hot ones i think can end now i think conan put a (laughs) capper on hot ones right off into the sunset yeah um it's amazing how far hot ones has come from like a cult following on YouTube six years Mm -hmm. ago to how big it is now and how big Sean Evans is now, who, by the way, still is a great interview. He does a great great. job. Conan even says to him, he says, hey, outside of this chicken wing thing, you're a great interviewer. Kind of telling him, like, I don't think you need to do this anymore. Yeah, I could see a future in which Sean Evans hosts like a late, late show sort of thing, you know, to ease him into late night type of thing. And speaking of Conan Goo, I think it was 30 or 31 years ago this week, uh, Mm -hmm. Conan got his uh, late night job when he was 29 years old, which is like amazing to think, which means Conan is 60 years old right now and he does not look it. Fresh off of being a writer on SNL, The Simpsons, he got that job. And what I love off of, uh, you know, jumping off the back of this Hot Ones episode is that the internet has rediscovered or discovered Conan for the first time in all of his old bits on his late, late show, which is I still think the pinnacle of what he has given comedy. And I am so happy about that. I got to give you credit, Goo. Going back to when we were like 13, I think you were the first person that ever started like referencing Conan when we were in school. Like you were the first person I remember like being a Conan guy so much so that during football practice, when you'd score a fake touchdown, you'd do Conan's little string uh, marionette dance. (laughs) So credit to you for, for being a Conan guy early on. Also, I think at the end of this week, his HBO show, I'm sorry, his Mac show, where he travels to different countries, is coming out. Conan really got a raw job in the late night circuit 12, yeah. 15 years ago, whenever he was supposed to take over. Um, Conan is 
like if you were ranking all time late night hosts, I think you do Carson and Letterman one, two in some order. And then Conan's probably right there. Number three. So because of my age, because I'm not a 60 year old man like yourself, <laughs> um, Conan is right up my alley. He is my late night uh, talk show host. Yeah. Well, he's I, exactly I, our style. I totally agree I, with you I on that. I think if I was maybe five years older, I'd be Letterman. If I was 20 years older, sure, Carson. But Carson, and maybe I just haven't seen enough Carson, uh, Johnny Carson stuff, but it seems like it's just kind of right down the middle. I think Carson set the mold for what what it was like to, or how to be successful in that yeah. in that arena. Um, I have uh, grown a greater appreciation for Letterman as we get older and as we yeah. see more stuff from Letterman. To me, Letterman is a bit like how I view Seinfeld as I get older. It just gets better and better. Like uh, things become more applicable, but you're right. Like if I were to, if I wanted to get a drink with one of those guys, it would be Conan. Or if I wanted to listen to one guy rant for five minutes, it would be Conan. But I think Letterman, Conan, and Carson are, are your top three for sure. News down. Fuck you, you suck. Perfect intro for the Thunderbolts asterisk which is uh, they showed a first look of Harrison Ford's Thunderbolt Ross at CinemaCon, I believe. And Mackie apparently cracks a joke about the appearance change similar to Iron Man 2. I like saying asterisk, asterisk. I always feel like I put the S in the wrong spot. Yeah, you, I think you put K before the S when you just said mm -hmm. it. It was almost like an ask ax situation there. Um, this is going to be interesting, Goo, because... They throw a fucking asterisk at the end of this title and Feige's like being coy about it. He's like, you won't know until after the movie. Like I, what, what could this possibly mean? Like I, I don't, I don't even have one iota. Think it's because they were playing drums during the world series. <laughs> uh, Harrison looks good as Thunderbolt Ross, the president, president Ross, by the way, I like that. I'm okay with them cracking the jokes. Like it's the Don Cheadle yeah. stuff. Um, I'm just like befuddled as to what the asterisk is going to mean. And apparently a big plot point here is that Thunderbolt wants to restart the Avengers, but Sam and him have a disagreement about how that's going to happen. Well, probably so because he, he wants to the Thunderbolts. reintroduce it with uh, the Sokovia Accords back or something like the Sokovia Accords. Right. Well, that and if he's trying to restart the Avengers with guys like U.S. Agent, I don't think Sam's going to be in on it, obviously. So. Um, this is that that movie is gonna gonna be real interesting. That's for sure. News down. Fuck you, you suck. We are so the director of this movie is telling us that Deadpool and Wolverine is not a sequel to Deadpool. It is Sean not Levy. Deadpool three. Sean Levy, but instead it is a bunch of movies. Yeah, I think he's trying to, for better or worse, temper people's expectations here because Deadpool and Deadpool 2 fall into sort of their own genre. There's not, there's really never been movies like those two movies. Um, and I think he's saying if you're expecting the type of shit that went on in those first two movies to stop expecting that or to maybe expect a little bit of that and not a whole movie's worth, um, which I'm okay with too, because obviously those are pretty self-contained and now we're opening it up to the MCU and, and shit like that going forward. But it seems very much like this is going to be uh Deadpool comes into the MCU rather than an MCU jump into a Deadpool movie. Or maybe it's just that by the end of the movie, Deadpool doesn't learn a lesson like he did in the last two movies. Maybe so. What, like was, that, David. what was that lesson? I'm not sure. <laughs> There's no... Keanu has joined the Sonicverse. Keanu Reeves, of course, not the cat from the movie Keanu. Mm, and very he'll be voicing movie. Shadow. Yeah, I don't know a thing about this Shadow character. They obviously teased him at the end of Sonic 2. Uh, Shadow looks really cool. I yeah. just know nothing about and him. And now he'll sound really cool, too. And now he'll sound very cool. And speaking of the Sonicverse, we're getting that Knuckles show on Paramount Plus in a week or two, April 26th. Uh, with six episodes, so maybe they're building towards their Avengers level event there. News down. You don't give a shit who's in your way, do you? What'd you say? You don't give a shit who's in your way, do you? Not really. We are getting a live action One Punch Man movie. It is still in development. Yeah, they announced this a while ago. 
then it was sort of in limbo. So the news here is we've got low, new writers. Can you go? <laughs> How low can you go? Have you uh, ever won a limbo competition? You seem like someone that can't. Uh, limb, I have won Twister. I'm more flexible sideways than I am like vertical, horizontal than vertical. I won a couple of Twister matches back in the day, Goo. I don't know if I've won limbo though. Mac, more more stretchy going vertically than horizontal. No, horizontally than vertical. Horizontally than vertical. Yeah. That's <laughs> if you can take one thing from this news dump, <laughs> is that Mac is Mr. Fantastic going side to side, but not but, up and down. Yeah, I'm the thing going up and down. Uh goo, live action one punch man. I don't know if you know the idea of what one punch man is, that anime. Basically, he's so strong that he can't find a, a, an opponent. He's oh. one punches everyone. He's kind of like a depressed type of character. And I might be getting that completely wrong. I've never seen an episode. Um, but the notable thing here is uh, Rick and Morty writers, Dan Harmon and Heather Ann Campbell mm. are writing the script. And I think that is the perfect tone for what this movie should go for. And Justin Lin is set to, set to direct. So I've got faith. I've got faith. News down. Uh, I don't care if I die at all. Everything has sucked lately. It appears that maybe we should have moved this up to the top here. This has to do with Civil War, the movie that is currently in theaters, dominating the box office. But Jesse Plemons was not cast for the role that he was in in this movie. Granted, not a giant role, but one that really sticks out in the film. Uh, but he was not cast for that role until a week before filming. Yeah, we... Uh... Spoke poetically, more so Goo, because he's seen the movie about Jesse Plemons last week. And we talked about how when he comes into something, he immediately makes it much better. Yes. And I think this actually explains why he wasn't in more of the movie. Uh, but I thought it was a nice little tidbit here that uh, the original person cast in the role dropped out a week before they started filming. So Kirsten Dunst was like, hey, why don't you try my husband? And they're like, sure. And now he's the best part of the movie. Do you want to hear my conspiracy theory? Sure. There was never anybody else cast for that role. Do you think they were waiting till a week before to cast the role? I think that Alex Garland was afraid to cast him slash afraid to ask Kirsten Dunst as like, I don't want to, you know, put it upon her. So he just like walked into the room. He's like, ah, shit, the guy that was supposed to play this role. Yeah, you know, the guy up. that we Does cast. Does anyone have any ideas for who could play this character? Ideally a redheaded man. Like, does anyone like have any relatives that might be, and he's just staring at her and she's like, I, I guess Jesse could do it. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, all right. I guess this, what's his name again? Jesse Plemons. Okay, Jesse, Jesse Plemons, is that his name? Okay, he can do the role. Do you, want, do you want him to read for it? No, no. He has the role. He can have it. No, it's too late in the process. We can't have him read. <laughs> News dump. Are you dumb? I am dumb. Thank you for asking, Crash. <laughs> Fallout is currently available. All episodes. Mac, you have taken a peek at it. I've also gotten some messages from people saying that they really like it. Yeah, this Fallout series on Amazon Prime, Prime Video, uh, obviously based on the video game series. I think there's five games or four mm -hmm. games or four games and some DLC type of thing. Um, I have not played one second of the game. I did in not college wrong. watch yeah. my roommate play a lot of Fallout. I think it was called New Vegas or something like that. Um, I never cared well, for the You game. were ripping the bong. <laughs> I thought <laughs> I thought the gameplay was dumb, but I like the, the world that they operate in. This show, the premise is that it like draws from all those games and draws from the world, but they're not replicating any of the stories from the games. So if you were to compare this to uh, what was the HBO show that we loved with the uh, last of us, last of you compare this to last of us, they're ripping the story directly from that game. That's not the case here. Okay. They're just inspired by the game um, through two episodes. Goo, yeah. I've really enjoyed it. This has the potential to be a very good season of television. They are not pulling any punches. The production quality is pretty good. It doesn't feel cool. like a Netflix original. Uh, Walter uh, Walton Goggins is one of the main characters. He plays this like ghoulish zombie type character. Uh, one of the chicks from Yellow Jackets is like the main, our actual main character. She's very good so far. So if you uh, were waiting for someone to say, "Hey, this is good," I would say give it a go. I think it's good enough to uh, to, to go for it. Quote line Mac. This is good. <laughs> yeah. I, I had very low expectations, and again, I know very little about the games, mm -hmm. but so far for me, as an ignorant, it's good enough. 
Also, I've seen either the creator, the director, someone associated with the show. One of the higher ups is pissed that all episodes dropped at once. And I've also seen uh, recently that the Scott Pilgrim, either creative upper people there, also hate that their show was also dropped at once. And everyone is pointing at X-Men 97 as we can let shows breathe. We can let some dialogue build throughout the week. Yeah, agree to disagree here because these episodes are like 50 minutes long and it's it's hard to binge these ones. So I would prefer them all come out. Let me watch them at my leisure and don't make it like, I don't want to have to watch it Tuesday night at 10 p.m. because that's fucking stupid. Let me watch two episodes every Saturday or something. And X-Men is 22-minute episodes, 24-minute episodes. Mm-hmm. It's completely different. Like, I, I think, um, I, I actually think X-Men should have been dropped all at once, but Disagree. Here nor there. Disagree. Um, I like that this is readily available. And then once you finish it, you finish it and you can have a conversation about it. News down. You don't give a shit who's in your way, do you? What'd you say? You don't give a shit who's in your way, do you? Not really. Dune 2 is on digital today. Yep. If you have not watched it already, you can probably buy it. I doubt you can rent it. Uh, it is still in still some some theaters, which is amazing. Um, I, we couldn't recommend that movie more. No, I think I've seen 12 or 13 movies so far this year, and it is so far ahead of anything else that's come out this year. Please go watch Dune 2 if you haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, I've seen 10. Also, I wanted to recommend to you, I just watched this the other day. It's called Snack Shack. Uh, I have started it. I have oh, started it. I, I like haven't it. finished it. I didn't finish it yet. I fell asleep. Mm-hmm. It was okay. It yeah, was okay. No, it's okay. No, it's yeah. nothing that's going to like you know bowl you over, like say yeah. if you were a bowling pin. Right. But right. um it's solid. I like it. It's watchable. Yeah, news dump. Fuck you, you suck. So we had to kill some time today. We're only at the 20 minute mark of this episode. So I thought, why not bring in a segment that I've been looking to do for a while as we approach seven hundred episodes <laughs> of Mac and Goo. Jesus. You include the regular episodes, you include mm. the news dumps, seven hundred episodes, and this is called Mac and Goo Memories. <laughs> Mac, of course, famously forgets everything that happens on the show once I hit the stop button. Uh-huh. Out the, so out the brain. Gone. I figured I would bring in a memory that I forgot about completely, and it's one that we shouldn't have forgot about. I'm going to ask you this, Mac. Do you I'm remember worried. from December 4th, I believe... 2018. Oh, pre-COVID. This I'm in trouble here. Are you ready for this? Ah, I don't know if I am. <laughs> and final Gooberty is brought to you by Just in Time for the Holiday Season. Are you a female living in Boston? Are you and your significant other both listeners to the Mac and Goo program? Does your name happen to be Christina Landers? If this sounds like you, then Phil Burns would like to know if you would like to spend the rest of your life listening to this podcast together. If you're not picking up what I'm putting down, will you, Christina, marry Phil? Phil mm. had us propose to Christina. End of the show. Yeah. At the end of the show, Sean Silver was the guest on the program. He was... Uh, white as a ghost as I was doing this. Very, very <laughs> nervous. Do you remember, and I completely forgot about this, Yeah, that we helped someone propose Yeah, on it's actually, show. I mean, we're two morons, so maybe not yes. us specifically, but the idea was great. Him and his uh, then-girlfriend, which became the fiancé on the trip, uh, went on a trip. They were, like, sitting at the beach, and Phil just started listening to Mac and Goo, knowing this was coming at the end. And so they got engaged while listening to Mac and Goo on vacation, which was pretty incredible. And I had actually, I don't remember if I had met Phil before or after that. It might've been before. I actually golfed with Phil a couple of times. Very good dude. We were happy to help him out. He's the one that helped me get this chair behind yeah, me. Nice so, chair. so uh love Phil. He's been a long time listener, but yeah, that was, that was an incredible moment for sure. She said, yes, <laughs> I hope <laughs> we really hope so. <laughs> oh man. You just Pressure's heard it, on us. Heard it here first. A Mac and Goo moment. Mac I, and Goo history. I swear to God, you better let us know. <laughs> yeah, please let us know either way. We'll send you a gift basket either way. Yes. We just need to know if we're going to put sad things in it or happy things Will in it. Will it be full of tea Public merchandise? <laughs> <laughs> we want to know if it'll be happy tissues or sad tissues. <laughs> <laughs>
I did message, uh, message, not message. I messaged Phil the other day being like, hey, is it cool that I play this? Because obviously 2018 is a very long time ago. And I'm like, yes, yeah. you guys haven't split, have you? Like, this, <laughs> He sent me a photo of his family. They have a beautiful child now. Awesome. I would like to think that they named their child Mac after oh, you. Yeah, or Goo, um, middle name Goo. Which then got me thinking of like, if they did get a divorce after that, in the divorce trial, would they have to fight over us? Like who, who gets the podcast? Is there a way to serve papers digitally? Because could we serve her papers digitally if they, they get divorced? I guess if you have any more life moments that you want us to help you with, go ahead yes. and reach out to us. Because yeah, this is so like, <laughs> this is like, I forget if I saw it first on TikTok or on Twitter or whatever. There's a guy who you can hire to break bad news to people. He'll break up with people or he'll deliver bad news. for. I think for you could do that. I think, I think I'd be okay. In it. I'd I think be I'd right. be bad. Like, I'd start crying every time. <laughs> like, hey, um, you're fired? <laughs> There's been a funny trend going around on TikTok about um, parents being really bad at delivering bad news. Just like really simple texts. And it made me think of your dad. I feel like your dad would be very much in that lane. Like if he would deliver bad news to you and it would just be like a two word text. Yeah. My father, the other day, I spent 45 minutes with him. And then when I got home, he sent me something very serious. And I'm like, you couldn't have told me this when I was sitting next to you 25 minutes ago. Right. Right. <laughs> oh boy. Life. Yeah, so. Fantastic. Yeah. Life's the best. All right, so that'll do it for this episode of Mac and Goo. We got to think of something for the end of the week because canceled movies has been canceled. Mm. Are you dumb?